Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to continue reading in the book of Genesis. We're going to read chapters uh, 40 and 41. Um, so we're going to read about Joseph interpreting, you know, the prisoner's dreams, the Pharaoh's dreams, and all of that. So he's going to get out of prison. So we're going to read about that. So I hope you guys enjoy these two chapters. So we are on chapter 40. After this, the king of Egypt, Egypt's cupbearer cup and baker offended their master, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, and put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guards in the prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guards assigned Joseph to them as their personal attendant, and they were in custody for some time. The king of Egypt's cupbearer and baker, who were confined in the prison, each had a dream. Both had a dream on the same night, and each dream had its own meaning. When Joseph came to them in the morning, he saw that they looked distraught. So he asked Pharaoh's officers, who were in custody with him in his master's house, Why do you look so sad today? We had dreams, they said to him, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, Don't interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. So the chief cupbearer told his dream to Joseph, In my dream, there is a vine in front of me. On the vine were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blo its blossoms came out, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup, and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. This is, my interpre this is its interpretation, Joseph said to him. The three branches are three days. In just three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position. You will put Pharaoh's cup in your hand the way you used to when you were his cupbearer. But, but when all goes well for you, remember that I was with you. Please show kindness to me by mentioning me to Pharaoh and get me out of prison for... I was kidnapped from the land of the Hebrews, and even here I have done nothing that they should put me in the dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was positive, he said to Joseph, I also had a dream. Three baskets of white bread were on my head, and the top basket were all sorts of baked goods for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. This is interpreted. This is its interpretation, Joseph replied. The three baskets were three days. In just three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head from off you and hang you on a tree. Then the birds will eat the flesh from your body. On the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, he gave a feast for all his servants. He, he elevated the chief cupbearer and chief baker among his servants. Pharaoh restored the chief cupbearer to his position as cupbearer and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But Pharaoh hanged the chief baker, just as Joseph had explained to them. Yet the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph when he forgot him. Sorry, I'm like super congested. I straightened my hair, but I had it up in a ponytail. Okay, back to our story. 41. Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dreams. This is a little bit of a lengthy chapter. At the end of two years, Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing beside the Nile when seven healthy-looking, well-fed cows came up from the Nile and began to graze among the reeds. After them, seven other cows, sickly and thin, came up from the Nile and stood beside those cows along the bank of the Nile. The sickly, thin cows ate the healthy, well-fed cows. Then Pharaoh woke up. He fell asleep and dreamed a second time. Seven heads of grain, plump and good, came on from came on one stalk. After them, seven heads of grain, thin and scorched by the east winds, brought it up. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven plump, full ones. Then Pharaoh woke up, and it was only a dream. When morning came, he was troubled, so he summoned all the magicians of Egypt and all its wise men. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but no one could interpret them for him. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, "'Today I remember my faults.' Pharaoh was angry with his servants, and he put me and the chief baker in the custody of the captain of the guards. He and I had dreams on the same night. Each dream had its own meaning. Now a young Hebrew, a slave of the captain of the guards, was with us there. We told him our dreams. He interpreted our dreams for us, and each had its own interpretation. It turned out just the way he interpreted them to us. I was restored to my position, and the other man was indeed hanged. 
Then Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and they quickly brought him to the dungeon. He shaved, changed his clothes, and went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, and no one can interpret it. But I have heard it said about you that you can hear a dream and interpret it. I am not able to, Joseph answered Pharaoh. It is God who will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, In my dream I was standing in the bank of the Nile, <clears throat> when seven well-fed, healthy-looking cows came up from the Nile and grazed among the, re the reeds. After them, seven other cows, weak, very sickly, and thin, came up. I never seen such sickly ones as these in the, all the land of Egypt. Then the thin, sickly cows ate the first seven, cow se first seven well-fed cows. When they had devoured them, he could not tell that they had devoured them. Their appearance was just as bad as it had been before. Then I woke up. In my dream, I also saw seven heads of grain, full and good, coming up on one stalk. After then, seven heads of grain, withered, thin, and scorched by the east wind, sprouted up. The thin heads of grain swallowed the seven good ones. I told this to the magicians, but no one could, but no one can tell me what it means. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's dreams mean the same thing. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads are seven years. The dreams mean the same thing. The seven thin, sickly cows that came up after them are, se after them are seven years, and the seven worthless scorched heads of grain are seven years of famine. It is just as I told Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Seven years of great abundance are coming through out the land of Egypt. After them, seven years of famine will take place, and all the abundance in the land of Egypt will be forgotten. The famine will be devastate. Will be devastate. Will devastate the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered because because of the famine and the. <clears throat> I cannot read today. Because the famine that follows, it, I have been congested forever. Or the famine will be very severe. Since the dream was given twice to Pharaoh, it means that the matter has been determined by God and he will carry it out soon. So now Pharaoh look so now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this. Let him appoint overseers over the land and take a fifth of the harvest of the land of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. Let them gather all the excess food during th these good years that are coming. Under Pharaoh's authority, store the grain in the city so that they may preserve for the land during the seven years of famine that will take place in the land of Egypt. Then the country will not be wiped out by famine. Joseph exulted. <clears throat> the proposal pleased Pharaoh and all his servants, and he said to them, Can we find anyone like this, a man who has God's spirit in him? So Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has made all this known to you, there is no one discerning and wise as you are. You will be over my house and over and all my people will obey your commands. Only I as king will be greater than you. Pharaoh also said to Joseph, See, I am placing you over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh removed his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand, clothed him with fine linen garments, and placed the gold chain around his neck. He had Joseph ride in his second chariot, and servants called out before him, Make way. So he placed him over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and no one will be able to raise his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt without your permission. Pharaoh gave Joseph this, the name Zaphnapanea, I think that's how you say it. Sorry if I say it wrong. And gave him a wife, Asnath, daughter of Potipharah, priest of On. And Joseph went through the land of Egypt. Joseph's administration. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Joseph left Pharaoh's presence and traveled throughout the land of Egypt. During the seven years of abundance, the land produced outstanding harvest. Joseph gathered all the access food in the land of Egypt during the seven years and put it into the cities. He put the food in every city from the fields around it. So Joseph stored up his grain in abundance like the sand of the sea, and he stopped measuring it because it was beyond measure. Two sons were born to Joseph before the years of famine arrived, as Anath, daughter of Potipharah, priest of On, bore them to him. Joseph named the first one Manasseh and said, God has made me forget all my hardship and my whole family. And the second son he named Ephraim and said, God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. Then the seven years of abundance in the land of Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began just as Joseph had said. There was 
famine in every land, but in the whole land of Egypt there was food. When the whole land of Egypt was stricken with famine, the cities cried out to Pharaoh for food. Pharaoh told all of Egypt, go to Joseph and do whatever he tells you. Now the famine had spread across the whole region, so Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians for the family. For the famine was severe in the land of Egypt. Every land to every land came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain, for the famine was severe in every land. So that was chapters of 40 and 41. Tomorrow we're going to be, read 42 and 43. We're going to read about how Joseph's brothers are part are in the famine, and then they travel up to Egypt, and then they meet with him, and they have dinner, and then they rejoice, and then they get the grain, and then they realize that that is their brother they sold, and it's just a good story. It's one of my favorite stories. Um, so I hope you guys like these two chapters that I read today. I hope you guys have a blessed day.